Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going into the Florida Mediterranean, which is one of three subtypes of the Florida style home. As always, how you build, how you play, totally up to you. I'm just exploring styles, figured I'd share it with you guys, um, and I think I'm coming down with a cold. So kind of a wild card of a video, but I did want to do one last Mediterranean style home this month and Florida one just because I thought it was funny Florida had a home style. And when I looked into it, turns out Florida style can actually mean one of three very different home styles. So hey, two more potential videos there. Today we're specifically talking about what the Floridians have done to the Mediterranean home style. It's been adapted into a beachy paradise home with lots of indoor and outdoor spaces designed specifically to keep cool air flowing through. And while heat is one issue, hurricanes are another and the concrete block construction covered with with stucco or plaster on the outside helps Floridians survive both. Backyards may be a grassy play space for young kids, but older families are replacing much of the yards with large covered pools and patios. Inside, these homes often have wood or tile floors or both, neutrals and pastels as the main color scheme and a touch of tropical influence and patterns and textures. You may also find a little bit of glam and mirrors and silver accents can still be found in many homes. These beachy, slightly contemporary, little bit of mid-century Mediterranean influenced homes were built for fun in and out of the sun. I'm starting on a 20 by 30 lot here in Oasis Springs today. I thought it'd be fun to build next to our other Mediterranean, which if you haven't checked that one out, I'll link it at the end of the video. There will be a lot of similarities as well as a lot of differences because the Florida style Mediterranean is sort of a, it's an evolving style, it's more recent, um, and it's really built to best suit the Florida climate and lifestyle. I will be going over a few sort of variations today um, just to highlight sort of all the ways that the style can come to fruition, but it's not going to be quite as cut and dry as some of the other styles we've done. I'm going to start with an 11 by 18 rectangle a few tiles in from the front. If you are also on a 20 by 30 lot, that'll be one tile in from either side and then back 11 which will be 3480. Because so much of the lifestyle of this home style anyway is focused on the outdoors, the pool, the outdoor kitchen, I'm actually going to be prioritizing putting the bedrooms more toward the front and sides of the house, and the living areas, kitchen, and dining will all more be toward the back with easy access to the backyard. So I'm gonna start three tiles out from the front here and make a four tile by five tile bedroom, a two by three bath, a four by three main bathroom attached to a five by seven master bedroom. On this side, I am going to start out one tile and do a three by five bedroom, a four by two sort of family bathroom, and then another three by five bedroom. Now I'm gonna grab my custom room tool and add a small bay window to the front of this room here. If you want a more contemporary style, of course, square that off. And then for our dining room, I'm gonna start in this corner, go out three, two, three, two, and three. I can use my standard wall tool and hold control to remove this wall and this wall. And I almost forgot to add my entryway, which will be five tiles by three tiles. So that will create a good transition space between the outdoor and the indoor. Have a huge living area here with a little sort of nook over here. It could be a library, office, whatnot. The kitchen will go here with a dining room and we'll have an outdoor kitchen as well. Now I want to talk about the roof. As with most Mediterraneans, you're either going to have no eaves or very small eaves. Because the Florida really pulls from a lot of Mediterranean styles, you could have either or. However, one thing that a lot of them do have is some sort of frieze under them. Speaking of friezes, we are building with medium walls today. They could be medium or tall, probably not short though tall ceilings. However, the friezes, unless you're using tall walls, they're just too big um, and they're really going to overpower the rest of the build. So instead, I'm going to cheat and use a floor trim. In order to use a floor trim, I have to do a floor. So I'm just going to trace around the whole outline of my lower floor and then delete my walls and ceiling. So now I have a floor. I can add a stepped exterior trim or if I'm feeling extra fancy, the dental exterior trim. And I want to sort of pick which direction I'm going to go for my colors at this point. If I want something warm, more pinks and reds, I'll probably go for a nice warm wood color like this. But if I want to go for something more cool, maybe blues and greens. First off, we have blue and green, but gray or white would work just as well. We're going to start with a hip roof covering the most possible area. And we're going to pitch it down to half to one third of its original height. I can then copy the same roof piece to cover the rest of my areas, just moving it over a little bit at a time until it looks like this. Now let's talk about what to do with these sort of half octagon shapes. We will be using an octagon roof piece, which we will pitch down to match, but we still want to cover this gap right here, which we will do with a gable roof piece. Pull in those eaves, pitch it down to match, 
and adjust the size of the roof and the eaves until we can get it to line up like this. Now that we know these pieces fit, we can simply copy them and resize them for the front here. So it should look like this when you're done. The main thing you're gonna notice looking at this roof right now is that it's all closed faces, which means we don't actually see any open sides of the roof walls. Someone's trying to join me and is bringing a chair. You gonna come sit with me? You can definitely leave it as closed face if you want to, or you can open up some of the faces. If you want to do that, you're going to grab a gabled roof and you're going to start by matching the size and pitch of the piece you want to remove and then you'll remove the piece you're not interested in and make sure that you pull your new piece back to line up and you can also decide if you want to extend the eaves on your roof or not if you do you'll just pull them out one and you can see how that makes sort of an upside down triangle line under the roof, which can look pretty cool. If you want to remove any areas of our faux frieze, our floor trim, you can do that by using your little sledgehammer tool and then holding shift to select only one portion, which will open up this space right here. All that really does is let us have more vertical height without being interrupted with a horizontal line. So once you have as many open and closed faces as you want, and once you've decided if you want your eaves to be overhanging at all or not, you can grab some beveled out roof trim that's going to sort of match whatever color you set your faux frieze floor trim to be. And now we can really appreciate that full effect that it has. For your roof, you can use the Mediterranean Magic Tile Roof, which we've done on, I think, every Mediterranean-inspired build we've done so far. You could also use the more composite tile roof. Then if you want to go with something more up-to-date and contemporary, you could use some corrugated metal or possibly concrete. This is a good place to experiment with some fun colors or no color. For your walls, the majority of your texture is going to be stucco or plaster. Again, though, you can use pretty much whatever color you want, so long as it's not too dark. Natural colors, bright colors, pastels, those are all in play. So I just use this plaster makes perfect, but if you want a little bit more texture, the stucco on you has some lovely color options as well. I forgot about Urbanity. Urbanity is a good, um, that has some good textures on it as well. It's just expensive. Anyway, you could potentially go in with some stone or brick to break up the texture a bit. Just make sure you keep it light or even just a different color of plaster. All right, I think we should talk about the decks and patios and lanais and all the variations. I really need to remember what the differences are. Anyway, we're going to add just a small one up front here, and then we can raise our whole house up one or two, maybe three. Uh, generally a pretty low foundation though. Now in the backyard, if you want to leave some grass, don't draw your little um, deck area as large as I'm going to, but I'm just going to fill in this whole space by drawing a wall all the way around and this has created a room. We can delete the ceiling and the walls and everything. It's just easier to get around all these little like nooks and crannies to just do it this way. And now we can add some fun stuff outside. If we decide to add a pool, we may or may not want it enclosed. If you want it to feel like completely enclosed, you could just draw a little room around it like this, and then grab your hip roof piece, pitch it down and add a glass texture to open it up. You can add windows around the side and probably a door somewhere. And now you have an enclosed pool. However, maybe you don't want it quite this enclosed. That's fine. Just decide what you want to keep and what you're not so keen on. Maybe you just want this whole side open. No worries. You can just remove the wall and add in a couple of columns. You could do columns all the way around, of course, or just get rid of the glass roof altogether. If you still want it to feel somewhat covered, but mostly just out in the open, grab your smooth keeper in sort of whatever wood tone you were using for your trim. And then you can draw a little pergola. Make sure you pull your fence line into the roof a bit to sort of hide the ends. And once you have your base structure down, you can just draw in cool shapes and stuff. Of course, you'll have to go through and delete all the little floor pieces that show up, but it can still give you sort of that idea of shade, even if it's not technically shading. Columns are pretty much a must for this in whatever style you think best suits your build. One last little thing you can do here is grab some exterior trim, the inlaid exterior trim, pick a dark wood tone and go through and place it to cover up that weird little bit of drywall that's sort of hanging under the fences. And there's a little pool pergola thing. Another thing that you can or could not add to your back patio is an outdoor kitchen. I'm going to add one sort of right outside the dining area here, but you can see I'm drawing a platform. That's because I actually want to sink it down a bit. This way, if I add counters and stuff out here, you can still see directly out the living room. It doesn't interrupt your view of the ocean. That's totally what that is. Um, but you still have like a cooking space outside. So that was kind of the idea there. We'll come back and make this pretty in a minute. Since when am I recording? Oops. Anyway. So other things you can add back here, you could add smaller pools, you could add kiddie pools, hot tubs, these hot spring things from Snowy Escape. And again, the enclosed space, 
the pergola nothing combination can cover any or all of the areas on your back deck here. I was just focusing on the pool for example's sake. All right, one last thing to do <laughs> um, outside is decide whether or not you want vaulted ceilings. I know vaulted ceilings are inside, but you have to decide outside because I'm just gonna move my roof over here. Where did that come from? So I'm just moving my roof over here. I'm resizing it a bit to keep it out of the way, but of course I can put it back. And if I want a vaulted ceiling space over my living room, what I'm going to have to do, since this is a floor piece, is actually cut a hole in the floor. I'm going to use my same smooth keeper, draw a little rectangle, delete the floor. Now I can draw in some beams to make it look cool. Put my roof back. Can't tell from the outside, but there's a look at it from the inside. Now, if we could paint the inside of ceilings and roofs, we could make this look so much cooler, but we can't, so it's just a vaulted ceiling with beams. Classic to the style, not necessary in The Sims because it can look cool or it can look dumb um, because we can't paint ceilings. Not that I'm salty about that, I'm fine. I think I'm coming down with a cold, but other than that, I'm fine. And just to go over what we did one more time, we're gonna move our roof pieces out of the way, then take your smooth keeper fence, and then drawing at least one tile in from the side, draw whatever shape you sort of want to have your vaulted ceiling be, delete the floor, now we have a vaulted space over our dining room, and then put our roof pieces back. Again, doesn't look any different from the outside, but we have some more cool stuff in the ceiling from the inside. Could you have done that before you placed all the roofs? Yes. Was that my original plan? Yes, but sometimes it's good to know what to do if you accidentally do things out of order. So we're going to pretend that I was just giving you an example of how to fix things if you do things out of order. To finish up the outside, let's talk about foundations real quick. This can be stone, it can be brick. Um, cinder block probably is most common, but we don't have a cinder block option, which I think is really weird. Most states that I've been to anyway, that's been like the standard foundation type, but we can go with bricks or just like some more sort of stucco texture or concrete or whatever this is supposed to be. Whatever the weather. Oh, well, true. We do need some hurricane protection, so maybe we'll go with that. For stairs, we could go with wood or concrete or even some tiles if we really wanted some sort of Spanish flair. And outside, we are primarily going to use stone or tile. Pretty light colors uh, because heat. And I'm going to use the same tile for my entry space, my bathrooms, and probably my kitchen. For the rest of my floor, I'm going to use hardwood. You can use both or just one or the other. I'm going with both, obviously. So my house is going to look something like this. All right, let's talk windows and doors. Usually I would have done this already, um, but between not feeling well and the assistant, I'm a little scatterbrained and bouncing around a lot. So I do apologize. Um, I do want this to sort of be an indoor and outdoor space, like a covered outdoor space for an entry. So I think what I'm going to do is something like this where it's very open and I have that large arch there. I just don't have any bigger arches um, unless I expand into more packs, which I'm not going to do. And then inside will be our actual front door. Now we could do something more traditional like this, or we could do something more modern like this. Either one is totally fine. I think I'm actually going to go in the more modern direction to sort of provide a greater contrast to our neighbor over here. But one of the really big differences is going to be the sheer amount of large windows we are going to have in this build. Again, you could just stick with something more traditional and go with the arches, but in Florida, we really want to celebrate the outdoors um, and with, you know, double pane windows and insulation, we have to worry a little bit less about heat, which is great. We like I live there anyway. So I'm going to grab some of these Let There Be Light for the short wall height, match my wood tones and use a lot of these. They're not quite floor to ceiling, but they're pretty big, which is nice. And that's just going to help this build feel a little more modern, maybe a touch mid-century, um, but definitely much more updated. And if you ever feel like you need a little bit more shape and dimension, again, throw down some arched windows, use some of these guys. It'll be great, I promise. I will use these little guys for my bathrooms because I don't fancy um, people staring in my bathroom. For my dining area, I think I will go with some of the slightly fancier arched windows. In the kitchen, I do still want windows, but they are going to have to be a bit shorter. So I think I'm going to use this guy because it looks very similar to what we've been doing with these, just smaller. As always, when you're placing windows, you kind of have to decide which is more important to you. Do you want it to look good from the inside or the outside? I'm trying to do a balance of both. This would be a great opportunity to use those giant sliding doors from the Eco Lifestyle pack, but I'm just going to go with a wall of windows like this. I'm going to use the same plaster makes perfect on the inside of my entry here. But then for the rest of the walls, again, sort of sticking with the same light, bright neutrals or pastels. If you want to accentuate some of that light and tropical feel, you could go with one of these wallpaper collections from the banana leaf motif. 
There are some salad swatches as well as assorted leaf color swatches with each sort of baseboard color. Some of the background colors in these swatches have similar colors elsewhere, like this plaster makes perfect. Um, actually, the same color we used outside matches the background of this swatch quite well. And for some of them, you're just sort of out of luck. This is how I'm going to paint mine. I added a little bit of tile to the kitchen over here. Added a little bit of wallpaper here and there just for some color and leaves. And for internal doors, just some plain old wooden doors will do fine. I'm trying to leave my larger walls empty for walls. No. I'm trying to leave my larger walls empty for mirrors, art, stuff like that. And now let's do the kitchen before I lose the rest of my brain. And suddenly I really hate these tiles. I'd really like to put a little bar island in my kitchen. And because this has fewer swatch options than the counters, I will be picking that first. As boring as it is, looks like beige is going to be our best bet. Now joining counters up like this to islands can be pretty tricky because you're going to have to deal with that backboard and everything. So instead, I think I'm just going to go with a galley kitchen and call that good. With appliances, of course. Dining room is plenty spacious for a massive table, plus lots of plants and whatever else you may want in there. For my family bathrooms, I am going to try and prioritize a shower tub combo just because they're so convenient. And for the guest bath over here, we could just stick with a toilet and sink. For the main bath, let's see if we can't get a little fancier. We're not really pulling in too much of that Florida glam with the bathrooms. Um, that's mostly because I'm tired and my brain isn't working very well. However, if you do want to bring in some mirrors, especially in combination with plants, and this is as close as I can get them together without turning on move objects, which is really frustrating. Well, in real life, it'll help the space feel more open. In Sims, it'll just help it feel fancier and be more expensive. Mirrors are pricey. And I think that's about it for the inside. We really want to embrace the, I know this isn't Florida, um, but we're gonna pretend it's Florida, the Florida landscape. Uh, so lots of the natural plants, lots of the natural rocks, and yes, we are going to turn on move objects for this. So control shift C, BB dot, move objects, and here we go. Because the rocks in this area are quite warm, I'm going to use this swatch here, and I can scale up and down with my bracket keys. Local plants include the palms, oh so succulent, agave, and a handful of other plants that are in the debug menu, but we have close items, which are these yellow wildflowers. And of course we can go in with whatever other plants we want as well. Those are just some good places to sort of start. You could also go for some more traditional suburban landscaping with some shrubs, the not grass grass. Once you're happy with how your landscape is looking, don't forget to grab a nice soft terrain paintbrush with some dirt on it and paint under all of your plants and rocks, any paths, your foundation, and we forgot to do the outdoor kitchen. I knew I'd forget that. All right. So the first thing we want to do to start finishing up our outdoor kitchen is grab, want to grab some platform trim. I'm using the same platform as is the um, foundation. The foundation is, gosh, grab some stairs, a grill, and then we can add in some kitchen counters. Maybe a couple of chairs to, you know, hang out, grab a drink. And this would actually be a really good place for our trash can, kind of hidden away there. This way, when we're in our dining room, we can just look right over it out into the ocean, because it's totally the ocean. If you want to add stairs um, coming out back here, you can just delete a little portion like this. Then your stairs will fit in quite nicely, and you can just sort of paint under them to make it look like they're supposed to be there. All right, let's do a little bit of a recap. The Florida Mediterranean is heavily inspired by Mediterranean homes, but is far more likely to have contemporary and mid-century modern influences. For example, large windows, big mirrors, a touch of glam, and a little less strict adherence to traditional Mediterranean sort of rules. I happen to have an example next door. So if we compare these two, notice we're not as keen on having enclosed courtyards, totally an option, but not as important. Um, arched windows definitely can be a thing, not really as important. Multiple stories, actually quite rare. Uh, most Floridian lifestyle, um, I believe it has the highest concentration of seniors of any state in the US. So one level living, two and two together there. Again, more windows, larger windows, still have pools and sort of outdoor kitchens and things in the backyard, but overall just a much more updated um, and more focused around Floridian sort of lifestyle. Also these columns look like they're floating, so I might change out my foundation over here just to help that out. Inside though, a lot of things are going to be the same. We're going to have a very open, main living area, bright pastels, a little bit of tropical influence on the walls. Bedrooms will be located mostly along the sides and the front of the build so that the kitchen, dining, and living areas can go right outside so we can have indoor and outdoor kitchen, 
indoor outdoor dining, indoor outdoor living areas, lots of opportunity for light and air to move around in and out through the house. Our walls are pretty much going to be medium, possibly tall wall height, very rarely will they be short. And we have the opportunity to do vaulted ceilings, which can just be a fun bit of detail. My lights are kind of floating there. Oh well. Landscaping is also going to be a bit different. Um, typically with Mediterraneans, you're going to do fairly sparse landscaping. Granted, my front yard here is not very large, so I didn't go too overboard, but much more lush layered landscaping, many more plants. You're more likely to use plants not found in the world because for as hot as it is, Florida has a lot of water. So that's what I've got for you guys today on the Florida style Mediterranean. If this head cold or whatever it is gets any worse, I might miss a day or two, but I am bound and determined to be back by Halloween at least because I do have a special build there. I am very illiterate in pop culture, but from what I understand, uh, this build has a special connection to Halloween and that's all I'm going to tell you about it. So subscribe if you haven't already, like the video if you made it this far. Um, hopefully my pain was at least entertaining to you. You can check out that other Mediterranean, the Spanish Revival Mediterranean in this card here, or you can check out the rest of this playlist in this card over here. If you're interested in learning more about the mid-century style home, I do have a whole video on that as well. This was kind of a fun little mashup of styles. I had a good time today. Hopefully you didn't hate it too much, and I look forward to building with you again, uh, possibly tomorrow. <laughs> we will see. Bye!